Hello, and welcome to the Movie Universe. I'm your host, Movie Fan. Today, I'm going to talk about the Power Rangers fan film that sadly never came to be, and that would be the legendary MMPR. Legendary because everybody had high hopes for this, and sadly, it never happened. Now, I'm pretty sure everybody remembers this because the trailers are still out there, and we were so stoked for this. I am not kidding. Everybody was stoked for this. This was going to be the Power Rangers fan film that would take the whole franchise or the legacy into a whole different direction. Because this was going to be dark. It was going to be gritty. It was going to be, well, pretty much a follow-up to the original series. And I'm talking the Mighty Morphin series. Not Zeo, not Turbo, just Mighty Morphin. Because this one was going to be centered around that Lord Zed has returned. And the government is trying to create power morphers to stop him. And there's even a hint that Zordon is still around. Or at least they know how to get hold of him. And in a way, this was also going to be a groundbreaking film. Because for the first time ever, Red Ranger would not be the leader of the Power Rangers. Instead, the leader would be the Blue Ranger. And for the first time ever, the leader of the Power Rangers was going to be a girl instead of a guy. Because as we all know, traditionally... The Red Ranger is the leader of the Power Rangers, and he's always played by a man. Of course, I should acknowledge that White Ranger took over for a while during Season 2 and 3, but either way, traditionally, it's always been Red Ranger. So this was going to be something really special. And, you know, anything I say won't be enough, so I'll show you the trailers right now. We're soldiers. It's not our job to have a conscience. Maxwell? We've had a breakthrough. Are the morphers ready or aren't they? They are, General. Then we start tonight. You will never be Lord Zed. Who's gonna be strong enough to beat him then? You still hit like a girl. of years, I have laid waste to the worlds. Who will be mighty? Who will be powerful? Countless souls have been destroyed by my hand. Beings throughout the galaxy kneel before me as their master. <laughs> throughout the millennia, nothing challenged my rule until they stood in my way. I have toyed with these pitiful mortals for far too long. <laughs> Soon my power shall return, and the time will come to rip them to pieces. The souls they project will beg for mercy, and their world will lie in ashes. I will have my revenge. I will destroy the Power Rangers! Whoever gets this message, my name is not important. What I've uncovered is... I'm a computer engineer. And the other night, I stumbled upon some highly protected files. Since then, something hasn't been right. I think I'm being followed. I need to get this message.
message out to the public. And we all remember the stories about the Power Rangers. I was just a kid back then. But I remember the wars on Angel Grove that nearly destroyed the city 20 years ago. Files uncovered. They were called Project Ranger. There's this group within the government called the Silver Guardians. They're an extremely powerful group. And in the files, it said that some kind of war is coming. And for results, General, but we're not ready. I need more time. There is no more time! General, we're dealing with alien technology, the likes of which I have never seen before. Amazing stuff. But what is the problem? The problem is I've never seen anything like this before. I need more time to understand it. Maxwell, as a scientist, I understand you need to research everything fully. But it takes great men to leap into the unknown. General, you understand. We chose you for a reason! I take it as a personal insult when I have to question that decision! There's more you need to understand. Zed is out there! The assets we will acquire are limitless. Remember this, Doctor. There is a war coming, and the Silver Guardians can only do so much. What do you want? Five teenagers with attitude? We need Project Ranger activated! We need. Zorda. Now that was awesome. In fact, it was so awesome that Austin St. John actually gave his endorsement for it. I'm not kidding. They actually showed him the trailer at one of the Comic Cons he was at, and he said he loved it. He loved the fact that it was dark and, you know, it wasn't, well, like it was ba done back in 1993. He loved that. It was dark. It was gritty. It was new. It was fresh. A great new angle for powering. And in quite a good way. Even I was excited for this. And I know this goes against my moral character, especially with Power Rangers, because for me, it's always, well, you know, I prefer them to be what they were, you know, just role models and, you know, a great kid's show. But, you know, Every now and again, guys like myself have to get away from that idea and go with something a little more darker and grittier. Hence why I love Power Rangers Unworthy. So I was excited for this. And sadly, it never came to be. So what went wrong? Well, truth of the matter is, w nobody really knows for sure. There is so much rumor going on out there. In fact, there's a whole lot of he said, she said. And most of this he said, she said comes from two people in particular. The first one is director Dominic Civilli, who apparently was the creator of this whole project. He said in 2017 that the special effects department Threshold didn't finish the job, and he's waiting on that. However, Threshold, who is the second party in this, say that they got the effects done, and they're waiting for it to be scored. And believe it or not, it was supposed to be scored by Ron Wasserman himself. For all you Power Rangers fans, you know who Ron Wasserman is. That's the guy who made all the songs to Power Rangers back in the day. And if you're going to ask, what does he say? Well, he says that he was all excited for it and he wanted to do it, but he never got a call back on the subject, basically. They never got back to him. So he never had a chance or the ability to create a new score for him. There's even a third party, and that was the editor himself, who said that the video was pretty much done, except for the special effects and the score. What happens after that, he doesn't know. In fact, nobody seems to know on this thing at all. In fact, 
the cast and crew were contacted multiple times and most of them have no idea. They actually responded saying that they really don't know because Dominic Civilli kept them out of the loop. He did say in one video that his mother died and, you know, he had to take care of that. And yeah, yeah, no argument here. I mean, when that happens, that's more important. But after that, nothing more was said. And there was one person who actually got into contact with him. And this is what he basically said. He said that the film was actually 70% done. To make a long story short, he pretty much had a contract dispute with Threshold. And, well, then it just got all jumbled up and thrown on the back burner. He didn't exactly come out and say that it got thrown on the back burner, but it's kind of obvious that's what happened. Because for Threshold, apparently, they have edited lots of movies and probably a few TV shows. And here's the thing. You know, fan films don't really generate income. They really don't make money at all. And that's the sad truth. At least not then. I don't know about now, but back then they didn't. And they made it very clear that this was going to be non-profit. They pretty much just cut their losses and moved on. Will it ever be finished? Will it ever be seen? Will anything ever come of this? I don't think so. I'm, I'm pretty sure it won't. And that's really sad because, you know, it had great potential. The idea was incredible in itself. I loved the concept, even though it was dark, but apparently they were both overambitious in this whole project. And sadly, because of that, no more. One of the things that they did say was part of the problem was funding, because they ended up generating a lot of money. Apparently, they actually got over 40 grand to do this project, thanks to Kickstarter. But, yeah, the fact is, uh, I guess it just wasn't enough for this big of a project. That and things got in the way. What they all were, we'll never know for sure. Obviously, Dominic Civilli's mother dying, sure, that was a big part of it. A little contract problem, yeah, that was another part of it. And, you know, special effects are not cheap, no matter what you do. And that's the truth, they're not cheap. So, yeah, sadly, we will probably never see this come to light. And it's really too bad. If anything, it should be a lesson about overambition. The fact is, when you get ambitious about a project, you definitely want to try to make sure that your goal can actually be met. That's the key thing. And, you know, one thing that I think Dominic Civilli needs to learn about this is don't keep people in the dark. That's what really kind of got him into trouble with the fans. He kept us all in the dark. Because people were constantly sending emails on Facebook and all that asking, where's the movie? Where's the fan film? What's going on? And most of the time, he wouldn't respond. And that's the truth. And in fact, you know, he even kept the actors in the dark. Keeping the actors in the dark, I could understand. But keeping the public in the dark, that was a problem. And that really came back to bite him in the worst way. Because I'm sorry to say this, folks. When you tell people that something like this is coming out, and, you know, you're having problems. It's a good idea to let them know. That way they don't feel like they've been cheated. Now, granted, the people who funded the Kickstarter project, in a way, they were definitely cheated. And the, the public itself, well, granted, they didn't put up any money. But, you know, fans, you know, they get their hearts set on these things. And they want them to come out. And when they don't get what they want... They feel cheated. That's the sad truth. Heck, a lot of fans felt cheated over the 2017 film for several reasons. It's not right, but that's the way it is. Because I'll tell you this, when Zordon of Eltar was coming out, I talked to the director himself, Cisco Davis Jr., several times via the uh, comment section. And he made it pretty clear that he wasn't going to make the mistakes that MMPR made. He was going to, you know, just give a little hints here and there as to what was going on and to let him know about the progress. And in fact, you not, may not believe this, but back in the day, I actually helped him out a little by spreading the word amongst Power Ranger fans that, you know, the guy is actually working on this. He's doing the best he can. It's just, you know, what he's got to work with, well, it's taking time. And you may not believe it, but it really did happen. I actually talked to him about it, and I gladly let them know about this sort of thing. Because, you know, it helped. That's the key thing. You can't keep the public in the dark about this. And in fact, when he wanted to create the sequel to Teenagers with Attitude called Back to Action, 
Well, he came out and said that, sadly, because he couldn't get the funding, he had to pull the plug on it. And, you know, that's the right thing to do. You got to let the public know, or else they'll hate you for it. And that's the truth. Well, let me say this in closing. For Dominic Civilli, I hope he learned his lesson about keeping the public in the dark. And sadly, you know, this will never come to light. There will never be an MMPR. I'm sure of it. I wish there would have been, but I think it's too little and too late for that to happen now. So we can only look at the little trailers and think to ourselves of what could have been. If it had been finished, I think it would have been awesome. Let me know what you guys think. This is Movie Fan, signing off.